Okay, so here we're going to go through some examples of how to work with the mean, standard deviation and the uh, variance. So whenever you get an exam question or a question to do uh, from data that you've collected for maybe a control assessment, you write down the formulas because it kind of helps you to focus uh, what's going on. So for the mean, uh, it's always going to be, for a list of numbers, it's always going to be the sum of the data divided by the number of numbers. Now the variance is given by a formula that says that we do the sum of the data squared divided by the number of data points, take away the mean squared. And the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So we're going to do the square root of the sum of x squared divided by n, take away the mean squared. So when we get the formulas written down, we can then start focusing on what we need to calculate. So we've got to find the mean of the data, and it says to add up all the data. So we work out what the sum of x is, and if we add up all of this data, then we find the sum of x is 18. We also need for the variance the sum of x squared. Well, that means we've just squared each of the data values, added all of the answers up, and we'll find when we do that that we get an answer of 50. So the sum of the data squareds are 50. So 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared and so on. We can now use the formulas to calculate the answers we need. So for part A, uh, we needed the mean. So it's going to be the sum of x's divided by the number of data points. Now the total is in the question of 12 data points. So when we do that sum, then we get an answer of 1.5. So the mean number of brothers or sisters for this question is 1.5. For the second part, they've asked us to calculate the variance. Well, the variance formula says that we take the sum of x squared, so that was 50, divide it by the number of data points, 12, and take away the mean squared, so 1.5 squared. Uh, if we put that into our calculator, then we'll find the answer is 1.92. Now, the standard deviation is the square root of uh, the variance, so the standard deviation is going to be the square root of uh, 1.92. And again, to three significant figures, if we put that in our calculator, we find the answer is going to be 1.38. Now remember that uh, the mean is just typically on average what's uh, happening with this uh, data. So on average, there's one and a half uh, brothers and sisters uh, to these 12 people. And the variance is a measure of the dispersion, how far apart the data is around the mean point. And uh, the variance here is suggesting there's 1.92. Now remember the problem with the variance is the units of that would be number of brothers and sisters squared. Well, that has no meaning really, but the actual variance number does give us an idea of the spread of the data. And the standard deviation, that normalizes the units to be the number of brothers or sisters. So we're saying here that the standard deviation is 1.38, so the spread around the mean is 1.38. Now another example of a question that uh, you might find is that they could give you some data already for a set of data. Uh, they've already told you what um, the data points all add up to, and they've told you what the sum of their squares are. So when it says find the mean and find the standard deviation, again, you should really be writing the formulas down to kind of help you see what's going on. So for the mean, for a list of numbers, for 10 members, then it's going to be the sum of the data divided by the number of data points. And for the standard deviation, it's going to be the square root of the sum of the data squared plus, uh, sorry, divided by uh, the number of data points, take away the mean squared. So for part A, we can see that uh, the mean is the sum of the data. Well, they told us that was 604. And we're divided by the number of data points. So there's 10 members in this uh, question. So I think the question should have had a sum value there because it's telling us the sum of the data and that gives us an answer of 60.4. So kilograms of course because we really ought to be given the units because this is about the mean weight. And for part B it's asking us to do a calculate standard deviation. So again using the formula we can see that we put the sum of x squared, so I think some sum has been missed off there. So the sum of x squared 36,870 divide by the number of data points, take away the mean squared, square root that. Uh, so we put all that in our calculators, then we'll get an answer of 6.23. Again, the units, kilograms. So that's the answers for those particular questions. Um, in terms of interpretation, then of course, uh, because we're um, working out this, 
Uh, weight is a continuous variable. It's a small sample size of 10, but um, if we assume that it's normally distributed as uh, weight normally is, if you take a large uh, sample, then we can remember that if we drew the normal distribution bell, it'd be telling us that we've got a mean weight of 60.4, and if we do the tails at three standard deviations away, so three lots of um, 6.23. Uh, plus 60.4, so 79.09, and 60.4 take away 3 lots of 6.23, so 41.71. So if we assume that this um, sample is representative of the whole population, then we're suggesting that uh, members of this systematic club um, would weigh between, so 99.8% of them would weigh between 41.71 kilograms and 79.09 kilograms. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, another example of a kind of a question they could ask you is where they give you discrete data in a frequency table. So this is about a frequency table. So again, write the formulas down. Slightly different formulas uh, when you're dealing with uh, group data or uh, frequency data in tables. So the mean is now the sum of FXs, so the frequencies times the data variable, um, divided by the sum of F, the sum of the frequencies, and the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the sum of FXs squared, uh, divided by the sum of Fs, take away the sum of FX over the sum of F, all squared. Technically, that's the mean squared. So we can uh, work with those formulas now. This is actually telling me now that I do need to work out um, some different values. I need to work out the fx's, and I need to work out the fx squared. The thing you've got to be really, really careful of with this kind of data, though, is um, that fx squared, we have to do the square of x first, and then times it by f. So if we look at this, uh, the flowers is the data, so that's our x values. Uh, the number of plants is our frequency. So we go through. So fx for the first one, 1 times 1 is 1. Um, 0 times 2 is 0. So I want to do the sum of fx's, so we're going to add these up as we go along. And then we've got to be doing 3 times 3, so 9. 9 times 4, 36. 12 times 5, 60. Um, 23 times 6, uh, 120, 138, uh, 9 times 7, 63, and 3 times 8, 24. So, we add those up quickly. So, 1 plus 9 plus 36 plus 60 plus 138 plus 63 plus 24. So, 331. Uh, we then need to be doing the uh, sum of fx squared, because uh, we're going to need that for the formula. So again, remember we've got to do x squared first, and then times by f. So 1 squared is 1, times by 1 is 1. 2 squared is 4, times by 0 is 0. 3 squared is 9, 9 threes are 27. Uh, 4 squared is 16, 16 nines. Right, 16 nines, 1, 4, 4. Uh, then we've got 25, because 5 squared is uh, 25, so 25 times 12. And then we've got uh, 6 times 6, um, times 23, so 828. And then we've got uh, 7 squared is 49, times uh, 9, 441. And then we've got 8 squared, 64, times 3, so 192. So we add all those up to get our uh, sum of x squared, so we've got the 192, so if we plus the 441, plus 828, plus 300, plus 144, plus 27, plus 1, so we get a total of 1933. So if we put that data now into the formulas, then we can calculate the actual values we want to do. So the mean is the sum of fx's, so that was 331, uh, divided by the sum of f's. Well, the table told us quite nicely that there's 60 uh, flowers, so the sum of f's, though, 
60 plants, sorry, it said 60 specimens of plants, so we've got to add those up, we get 60, so we divide by 60, and that will give us an answer of 5.5, so the answer for A. Now the answer for B, uh, the formula for calculating the standard deviation says that we're going to do the square root of the sum of fx squared, so that's 1933, divide by the sum of f's, uh, take away um, the mean squared. So the mean 5.52 squared, because uh, the mean when we did this was 5.52. And when we do that on our calculators, we get an answer of 1.34. So again, the important thing to remember about this is when you get a table of data, a frequency table of data, then write down the formulas slightly different to the other formulas for a list of numbers because of the frequencies now. So frequency of x, frequency of x and use the formulas properly. So one last type of uh, question uh, when we're dealing with group data. So what we've got here, uh, we're talking about 28 cars uh, and their prior sale prices. Um, again, uh, we think about what the formulas are. So for the mean, it's the sum of fx uh, divided by the sum of f. And for the standard deviation, then it's the square root of the sum of fx squared over the sum of f's minus the sum of fx over the sum of f squared. And again, that's just the mean squared. So this time though it's group data. So we've got intervals where we don't actually know exactly what these, for example, these three cars cost, but we do know they're between 500 and 1,000 pounds. So we've got to remember in this case that x is our mid value, our midpoint value. So you've got to be careful with that. So always um, sensible to add on the columns. So we need to work out our fx's and we need to work out um, our fx squareds. Uh, bear in mind that uh, x is the uh, midpoint. So here we're going to be doing uh, 750 times the frequency. Uh, 1500 is the midpoint times the frequency. Um, 3000 times the frequency. 5000 times the frequency. 7,000 times the frequency and 9,000 times the frequency. Again, the midpoint is being used. So we'll work out um, what that is uh, on the calculator in a second. Um, the fx squared, well, again, we've got to think that the x is the midpoint, so 750, but we're squaring it. Then we times by the frequency, so that's where we've got to be careful. Um, so it's 1,500 squared times 4. Uh, 3,000 squared times 6, 5,000 squared times 8, 7,000 squared times 5, and 9,000 squared times 2. So adding up all of these will give me the sum of fx's, and adding up all of these will give me the sum of fx squared. So for the sum of fx's, uh, we find that the answers. 4,000, no, let's have a look, so 750 times 3 plus 15, whoops, 1,500 times 4 plus 3,000 times 6 plus 5,000 times 8 plus 7,000 times 5 plus 9,000 times 2. So we find that the sum of fx is, is 119,250. And if we do the same thing for the sum of the fx squared, if we add up all of those numbers there, then we get an answer of 6716870. Oh, oh, oh. So that's going to be the values we use in our formulas. So let's go back to the question. Uh, find an estimate for the total value of the cars in the sale. Uh, well, the total value of the cars is the sum of fx's. So for part A, uh, £119,250. Because we're talking about uh, prices in pounds. Uh, part B, work out an estimate. Well, that's the 19250 divided by how many cars there were. Well, there were 28 cars. Uh, so if we do 119250 divided by 28, then 4,000 
258 pounds and 93 pence so that will be our mean point and then we can put our numbers in because it wants to estimate the standard deviation so for C then we need to be writing down the square root of the total of the fx squared so 7671687 divide by the number of data points which was 28 minus the mean because the sum of fx the rest of f is just the mean so minus the mean 4258.93 all squared and when we do that on a calculator uh, we get an answer of 2420 pounds so our standard deviation is found to be 2420 pounds so the spread of the data around the mean point 2420. Now for part D it just says uh, why are these answers only estimates? Well it's because we've used the mid values and they are um, just saying that for example these eight cars here uh, we know they're between 4000 and 6000 uh, we've chosen 5000 as the best guess for the price of all the eight cars some might be low some might be above uh, so it's just the best guess so D why are the answers only estimates? It's because we're using the midpoint values, so we don't actually know the exact price of all the cars. And that's how standard deviation, variance and mean can be calculated.